Good morning, folks. Antidote to insanity from last night's news. I'll rip them when they deserve it and credit when it's due. They have hit all the high points for why Hubble ice on images appear like this. Apparently they're as sick of the nonsense as we are. It's not a UFO or anything crazy like that, just a potentially significant comet. Rather than hunt through my comment sections for astronomical image parallax discussions, just read this explanation, and if you need more, a third source on our side is Astronomy Live, and they did a much better job than either NASA or I did explaining it. Terrific article, and today's top recommendation is Sarah Seeger's new alien life equation. She's rehashed Drake just a bit. And with the utmost respect for Sarah, observers who have seen Starwater Chapter 1 know she should consider expanding at least one of her variables. This is an Earth Observatory shot of the rim fire near and in Yosemite. The situation is improving slightly, in some places quite a bit more than others. Multiple tropical systems developing in both the Atlantic and the Pacific, but the imminent threat right now, should it choose to beef up, is just east of the Caribbean. Australia and New Zealand, each seeing showers over the next day with the pink tags I've added. In Europe, a powerful low dropped down past Finland and really kicked the counterclockwise drive when it set eyes on Russia. Just look at the clouds bend to the pressure's will. This is also the way we dissect today's U.S. temperature delta. Intellicast has this 24-hour change to heat and cold. Now, high pressure drives clockwise in the northern hemisphere, so we drive heat north on the western left side and bring it south on the leading eastern side. Low pressure out west is helping at the convergence as its eastern flow heads north as well. You can see that motion on the wind map. Should not be hard at all to see why it's warmer in the north central states and a bit cooler in the Midwest. Eyes up top here, above the Earth overlay, that big sunspot group is falling apart. All four primary regions are exiting the Earth-facing disk with magnetic mixing potential remaining on the trailing southern group, while the leading northern group complexes as it heads out of sight. Could be a limb popper. Top right box, you see magnetic connectivity of Earth near the departing active regions, and on the left, you see blue Earth with a proximity warning so close to the sunspots. Still got Venus yellow on our side and Mars and Mercury sharing connection on the back. Powerful coronal holes facing Earth tomorrow. They lose points for not being equatorial, but they are big and powerful according to ISWA. Last night's watch was a 4-6 to six hodgepodge, and I'll keep it mid-range, but not for long. We had a volcano erupt in Guatemala yesterday. No major quaking, just locational upticks in PNG and the Indian Ocean, largest ones of the day. But the most unusual was a 4.3 in Texas, complemented by a 4.1 on the west coast. Also this, the aftershocks from that 7-pointer had folks worried about more on this individual location, but it has indeed quieted. Those bigger coronal holes will be here in a day. Expect the uptick to hold off just a bit. New moon in a few days, likely what is eclipsing the SDO frames the last 24 hours. You'll see it a few times here, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.